We won't stop it. Okay. <laughs> we'll wait for you. <laughs> we, okay. we have started. Great, thanks, John. So this is a winter breakout, which is really a follow-up, intended to be a follow-up to the restorative practices retreat that happened on November 1st and 2nd, I believe. And I can see six people in the room in Penfield. Is that accurate? Plus six John. People, plus John, which is not on camera, conveniently for him. Um, so it's good to see you all, and then everyone else is on Zoom. And hopefully all of you that have joined us were at that retreat on November 1 and 2. That's the purpose of this follow-up session. So if you weren't at the retreat, you're welcome to stay. It, it might be a, a um, it might be interesting, it might not be, but the intention of this is for folks who were at that retreat. So welcome everybody, it's good to see you again. I thought we would start with a restorative circle check-in just to see how everyone's doing today. So how about we let the people in the room uh, do a check-in first, and then I can kind of facilitate people on the Zoom by calling on people to check in. So anyone in the room want to start? Just a one or two word check-in on how they're doing today? Uh, I'll start. My word will be caffeinated. Thanks, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Which direction are you going in? Who are you passing it to? I'm sorry. So I don't know, maybe there's a microphone. I, I'm, I'm feeling excited right now. I'm just nice to be on campus. I haven't seen a lot of colleagues recently. Thanks, Scott. Good to see you. And I am going to choose happy. I am happy today. Great. Good to hear it, Lisa. Thanks. Brandon of pointing out that I'm wanted coffee and there's nowhere to get it on campus. Um, <laughs> But aside from being uncaffeinated, I'm I'm doing well. Super. Thank you, Lisa. I'm feeling um, pretty good. Today. What was that again, Ken? I am feeling pretty good today. Pretty good. Okay, great. Things are moving along and we're getting things done. Excellent. One or two words. <laughs> don't pull, don't pull the cord. Oh, we just broke it. Don't I'm, I'm, I'm feeling late, so I apologize. Uh, but I did get coffee. I, I see. Oh, I went to oh, Mickey oh, D's. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Grab a coffee. Lisa, we have coffee in OLS. Run over here. You're <laughs> <laughs> right now. I'm going to join you when it's done. <laughs> okay. All right, come there over is here. There's tea downstairs. <laughs> excited. I'm feeling excited to learn. Great. Thanks, Star. Okay, so I'm going to call on people that as I see them, hold on, I've got to get my whole gallery up here. Um, Michelle Bandela, how are you feeling today? Check in. Well, I just got a um, parking ticket in Syracuse, two parking tickets in Syracuse because their signs are stupid. But other than that, I'm feeling good to be back here. So. <laughs> Thank you. Jane? What did you call on someone, Michelle? No, I thought you were going to call people. I, uh, I, I, I can Sarah. do that, or we can do it that the person that's talking can call on the next person, whatever you prefer. Sarah, you're next on my screen. <laughs> hey, Sarah. Um, I'm feeling ready for a new semester. Uh, Annika. Um, I guess I feel ready to settled. <laughs> Uh, Jackie. Thanks. Um, feel lots of things. I'll choose content right now. And Liz. Based on what I've been working on the two hours leading up to this meeting, I am actually <laughs> enraged and disgusted. So I know that's really intriguing and super contrary to suck ups like star who's like, oh, I'm so excited. But anyway, that's where I am. Thanks, Liz. Markel, why don't you go next? Oh, thank you. Um, I feel good. You know, I feel excited for the new year, but I'm also like, damn, it's a new year. Um, <laughs> but I'm grateful. Uh, I'll pass it on to Grace. <laughs> Thanks, Markel. <laughs> um, I'm feeling scattered today. I'm going to pass it to Ashley. Hi, everyone. Feeling a little overwhelmed, but mostly excited. And I will pass it to, how about Holly? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am feeling very happy to see lots of faces. So um, it's gonna be a great year. 
and I will pass it to Megan. Hi, everyone. Um, I am feeling pretty tired. I just moved over the weekend, so I'm still recovering from that. Casey, how about you go next? I'm going to regret this, but I'm feeling really caught up. <laughs> I'm, I'm knocking on wood for you. I'm not <laughs> Uh, Christina, how about you go next? Um, I am feeling pretty comfortable right now. Good. Lisa, how about you? Sounds good. Um, I'm feeling really rested. I came off of two weeks vacation, 10 days of it in the sun in Florida. So a uh, little nervous on the to-do list situation, um, but can manage it now that I'm rested. <laughs> So jealous, so jealous, but welcome back. Michelle, Shelly. Hello, everyone. I feel good. Not great, not terrible, just good. It's going to be a good day. And Kendra. Kendra, you're muted if you're talking. I was talking, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'm feeling... Uh, productive and slightly overwhelmed, but um, I am excited to talk about restorative practices. And Kathleen, I just want to say thank you for opening up this session with this check-in. I, I really actually like these check-ins, so that's cool. Good. And pretty. So I think I'm somewhere between uh, caught up and uh, trying to catch up. Working on the back. <laughs> Wonderful. And I'll check in. I am feeling excited actually to get back in person, um, have enjoyed being remote, but ready to get back. Did everyone go? Anyone join? Oh, wait, I see we had a joiner to the in-person. Who is that? Do you want to check in? Can you hear me? I don't know if that microphone I don't actually think works. works. I think if you just It call. works, but it's you got to be pretty close to it. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's Jane. Um, I'm on a fast train and I'm not sure where it's going, but I'm thinking it's going to slow down pretty soon. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> oh, it's oh, it's <laughs> giant. <laughs> And it's Renee, and I don't know the question, but I'm in RA training. <laughs> it was just a check in, Renee. How you doing today? <laughs> good, good. Okay, um, that's super. the The next question I I really have for the group, and this can be more um, in, non sequential, so people could just pop in when they have something to say. And um, I'm going to let the folks in the room to kind of facilitate or wave at us. It's going to be really difficult for me to call on people, but I'll just allow us to try to figure this out organically. But my next question is, how have you utilized successfully any restorative practices techniques that you learned at the retreat since the retreat? Anyone willing to share ways that they have utilized? Lisa, I see your hand popped up. Yeah, I don't know how successful. I'm just been starting. So I started um, the circle going, making everybody, when we have a staff meeting, having everybody sit in a circle. And I still uh, have to bring in a device that we can toss to one another as to who gets to speak. But I did explain the, the so-called rules, but we need to set our own, obviously. But I just tried it that one day and it, I think it worked pretty well. They kind of grumble, but oh, I have to come and sit in a circle. And I'm just like, yep, yep, come on over. Like sit in a circle. So that went well. And I think everybody was good and everybody felt like they could listen and speak and and they participated, I think, more because they weren't hiding behind their desks. That's great. Thanks for sharing that, Lisa. Lisa Evaneski. There are three Lisas on this uh, call, so this will be yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, I feel like I should be there with you two in person. I feel like I failed. Um, so I think, well, you're aware of this, Kathleen, but we uh, are, there's a 
small group of us working on trying to create some proposals on what certain areas will look like in, you know, two to five years. And um, we started after the retreat doing check-ins at that meeting. And it was really, really helpful because I was feeling a certain way <laughs> and I wasn't really sure like if I was going to say it or if I was going to be heard. And it was actually really productive. And because we started with the the opening and like, what do you, you know, what's one thing you want to talk about today and, or a feeling or whatever we did. Um, and it was, it was a great way to get a conflict or what I perceived as a conflict, you know, in the, in the communication of things. And we actually got really far in that meeting because we started there. Um, and so, and, and, you know, Kathleen, you were part of it, witnessed it. Um, I think it was just so, it just felt so, um, so safe and, and like there was healing, healing happening right in that meeting that, you know, so it was really, it was beautiful. <laughs> it, was, it was, I can add to that. I think what we did was we identified where the points of disagreement were and we created questions and then we use the sequential circle process to talk through each of those questions and because we facilitated in a restorative way I think we all felt well I can speak for myself I felt really heard and really listened to and it forced me to really hear and listen to everybody else so it was a really really valuable way to facilitate us through some difficult conversations so I agree Lisa yep thank you for sharing that Kendra says from her phone, I was there. It was great. <laughs> Who else wants to share? If there's not someone uh, there, I go Scott, over. yep, I see your hand up. Uh, so, yeah, I think similar to Lisa, I wouldn't say that uh, it was uh, um, it defined as success per se, but I think when we laid the groundwork in club sports, uh, president's meeting, uh, e board meeting. Uh, we, we started in a circle. I think ordinarily, if it wasn't for the restorative practices uh, retreat, that I would have started in a more uh, a theater style or classroom style um, setting. Uh, we, we started in a circle. Uh, we did check ins. Uh, we provide an opportunity for them to present their challenges and points of pride. Um, and so the information sharing and the connectivity between the uh, eboard members, I think, was established in a proactive way. And, and, and I think it will better um, prepare us for some time that we have to be reactive. Um, I think they were at the retreat, maybe talked about the 80-20, that if we're not putting in the time that it, um, uh, to be preventative, that we're going to be always uh, reactive. Uh, and so I think that it was very successful. It was kind of more setting the groundwork. It wasn't a specific or explicit uh, uh, harm or healing necessary at the time, but we laid some groundwork. Thanks, Scott. I'll go Other next. Scott. Other Scott. Other Scott. <laughs> the. Um... <laughs> Second, Scott, and Scott did a great job, so I don't know if I'll be able to top him. Uh, but um, one of the things that I had happen to be yesterday is, um, you know, like typically happens, we, we tend to, you know, have conversations with students and parents that, that start at a very irate level. And um, one of the things I reflect upon with this process is just the power of venting um, for this mom and son. Um, you know, that were that had an argument against, you know, some of the campus policies. And um, it, it was amazing because, you know, it took a while, took an hour to get through it. But at the end, you know, they thanked me for listening, which I mean, they didn't thank me for anything else, but they thanked me for <laughs> was good. Active listening, I think, worked. I think allowing them to vent worked. Um, they didn't leave more pissed than they were when they started. So that's good. <laughs> at least we made some progress. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. And I know that family that you're talking about. So congratulations yeah. on getting to the point that you did. <laughs> my, my ear is still ringing a little bit. I'm my sure. ear was put when I was calling. <laughs> Who else would like to share? Oh, 
Christina, I see your hand up. Thank you. Um, so we actually use the check-in circle in our C-STEP seminars. We hold weekly uh, zero credit seminars for students three times a week, um, and they're different sized uh, classes. It I usually do a check-in with our students, but it's usually pretty much tell me how you're doing, or I try to use like a poll online or something like that. I really liked the circle because it <clears throat> gave a face to the reactions. Um, and I feel like it provided space for students to feel like they were actually being seen. Um, so I continue, I'm planning on continuing to use this throughout the next semester in our seminars um, as an opportunity to not just um, do check-ins, but also to elicit feedback from them regarding what we're doing and what we can do to help support them. On the other side of that, I attended a meeting where we did a restorative uh, check-in in in the beginning. And um, it was interesting uh, given the makeup of the meeting, Lisa was there. Um, And so it was, I think it is a great tool. Um, I think there's still work to be done on making people understand how it's a great tool or having them be receptive to that type of environment. Thanks, Christina. Shelly. So I um, have done a little bit of checking in with the peer eds as we are in class. And then I also use it at the end of the semester to do a debrief. So we did a sequential circle where everyone talked about best thing about the semester and then the worst thing about the semester, and then we did a non-sequential of what would they have changed if they could um, to give kind of everyone an opportunity to have their voice be heard. So that was kind of um, cool because it gave a lot of feedback for me and it it created some conversations afterwards that we had, uh, which was really good. And I know Christy is not here, but we do it quite often in our staff meetings and we pass around chocolate. So. <laughs> That always gets everybody to speak up because as you pass the bag of chocolate around, you can take some and that usually gets us uh, gets us going. So that's been really good for us to do that at our staff meetings. Good recommendation for a talking piece. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Shelly. Yeah, okay, I was like, am I in the field? <laughs> that's, I might be too far over. This is Casey. The microphone's right there, though. If you want to move up to the microphone. No, I could hear everyone really well downstairs. Yeah. I used uh, both uh, yeah. sequential circles. But, but people online won't hear you that I well. was online. Oh, yeah, okay. we can hear. Yeah. Okay. I used um, sequential circles and non-sequential circles in the last class meeting for peer tutor training. And it made what was traditionally a kind of boring lesson <laughs> a lot better. And also I got a lot more feedback when I didn't really know like, hey, how do you like to study? They really were very interested in touching the talking piece. So <laughs> it made them want to participate because they wanted to feel the fluffy thing. So as far as using circles, it was very helpful <laughs> in class. It just happened to Jackie. Jackie, you're glitching. <laughs> Um, and I've used um, the process where you ask the questions like what happened, what were you thinking, and what can you do specifically when it comes to terminating student employees' job. So what happened, what were you thinking, how can we move forward, because it's always an awkward conversation, and I don't want to alienate them from coming to the center as a 2T. So when they lose their position as a tutor, I have to make sure that it's done with great care so we don't alienate them from our future services. So that's helped give me a framework of how to address that each time. Thank you very much for sharing that. Who else wants to share? Is Kristen Croyle on the call? No. Okay. Well, I, I don't want to share for her, but this this was my experience also. She did a circle to open up a class chairs meeting. And it was really funny because at the end of the meeting, I had like two people come up to me and be like, is Kristen okay? Like, <laughs> she started with like, you know, say something helpful that, or like if someone who you work with, like helped you with something, like I had a problem and Marat did this. And so, 
Um, it was so funny because at the end I was just like, no, no, she's fine. She was like, you know, like, so bad that she's having to like bring it to the meeting. So it was uh it was pretty funny. That's great. Thanks, Lisa. Who else wants to share? Okay, seeing no others, unless I've missed a hand, I'm gonna move on to the next question. Again, we'll do this in a non-sequential way. I'd love to hear about any challenges or uh, additional help that people feel like they might need. And this information, I think will, um, this question, the next question will help us as we uh, decide what we should do next with people who are trained, so people who have gone through the retreat. But what challenges or help do you feel like you need in order to utilize restorative practices more or continue to utilize restorative practices? So again, non-sequential, but if you can think of what challenges you faced or what additional help you think you need. And I'm going to try to take some notes on this. I'll do this one since I was absent from the first one of telling you used it if it works. Um, you know, and this is I mean, any organization of any size. And so higher ed organizations, but this would transcend higher ed. When people are determined to act in bad faith and are potentially astonishingly unself-aware of how their behavior is impacting others in really toxic ways, I don't know how these restorative practices can actually work because I don't think they'll work unless there's a glimmer or even a sliver of openness to saying that I, you know, I'm part of the problem. I have to be part of the healing or, you know, the improvement. And um, yeah. And if those of you who are particularly insightful might've guessed that this is tangentially related to my disgust and rage, you're correct. But, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, in the end, there are bad actors that are going to act badly, right? Um, so we'll call them the Tory spellings of any organization. Um, but yeah, got that. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. You're a great crowd. Um, but, um, you know, and I, you know, it, at some point, restore, restoration doesn't work if someone is determined to act in bad faith. And then potentially you are just more of the heavy, but there often seems to be a reluctance to do that in organizations. And it puts us in a, you know, you have a toxic stew that just kind of grows and brews. And uh, so, I mean, that's a challenge. I think, you know, restorative practices, there's a lot of context that we just saw where they can work, but I think all participants had at least some openness to coming away with some kind of resolution or something better. And sometimes that's not true. Thanks for raising that, Liz. And I can certainly talk to the IIRP people if they have sort of an advanced workshop, even if it's only an hour or two to help us uh, deal with resistance to restorative practices, or as you said, how, uh, you know, is it a technique that we only utilize with those that are, uh, outright buying in or are there techniques or strategies that we can utilize too so that's a good point thank you for raising that other challenges or resources that folks think that would help them utilize restorative practices lisa in the in penfield um i just was thinking it would be nice to have reinforcement of some of this when i was going through this i was excited to learn and I so focused on how like wrong I was or how I could improve myself. I didn't always focus on um, how to, to relay that to others or teach others like with the circle. You know, I started out with the circle, but as I listened to other people, I'm like, oh, I forgot to do the check-in and I forgot to do this, which might've been, you know, helpful. So maybe some reinforcement too, because it was a lot although I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it um, and am thankful that you, you know, you brought this to us and, and I was allowed to be in it. So, but I, I just would like reinforcement of the tools and, or easy access or things, or maybe a, a check-in in general, like maybe once a semester or like if we need it or I don't know, anything that could help me because sometimes I just get so busy with certain, as you know, unpaid balances. Um, I get so busy 
that I, I lose that restorative, like I, I lose that, do I want to, you know, set everybody in a circle or is it just, I stand in front of everybody and go, blah, 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 blah. And I don't want to do that. I want it to be, you know, I want to reinforce the team. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. That's really good to know. And again, good insight for what we might continue to do as a group of trained folks in supporting one another. Thank you for sharing. Jackie, I see your hand up. Yeah, I wanted to piggyback off of that um, and just thinking about um, there was a training I went through before break. And the neat thing about the training is that there was a ton of information, you know, so much of our training is just a lot. Um, and afterwards, like a week later, I actually got something in the mail for them. It was on life design training. And there are these flashcards and it had major activities and themes on each one of them. Um, to kind of reinforce, like, here's a takeaway, here's a takeaway. It might be neat to have a Google Drive that we just have the activities in because there's all these PowerPoints and handouts and, and, you know, a couple of handouts, but not all the activities and stuff like that, too. So it might be neat just to have a folder with just the activities, like the concentric circle, non concentric like, here's different things that you can, you know, do, you know, the checklists and, you know, other things like that. That would be kind of neat as a follow up to that as well, because I found that helpful from, you know, the other training I was with that. You know, we had binders and all sorts of, you know, and tons of information, but it was the, the activities. So, yeah, great. Thanks, Jackie. Renee has a hand up here if you don't see it. I don't um, see it. Thank you, John. Go ahead, Renee. Um, just going off with Jackie and, and Lisa, one of the things we give the RAs is a little call up card when to call up, and it's wallet size. And they carry it with them. So, something similar to that, you know. Check in, da 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 da, in a book bag, similar to the flashcard, but literally just a reminder. And then the flashcards can get into a little more information as to what goes into those, but just something similar to that that you can throw into your wallet or even take a picture of it for your phone. Um, and to know it's like, oh yeah, I gotta do that. And, and it's there, and you don't have to always try to pull it from your brain. Great. Thanks, Renee. <clears throat> Casey, I think I see your hand up. That's all. Yeah, I see. I'm, I'm on the end. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I struggled with at the retreat and I have not improved on since then is I don't feel comfortable running any sort of circle or restorative practice with someone who is above me in the chain of command. I have no problem working with my students, my student employees or people I supervise, but I think maybe that comes out of the fact that in my position, I don't supervise adults. And I feel really uncomfortable bringing something like this to someone above me. I feel like it's their job to initiate. So that was my confusion was how do you do this above your chain of command? And also how do you, use this in some things where it's just maybe not possible, like union issues where you're like, nope, we have a way we do this. So those are the two things that I was like, I feel that I'm not capable of doing that, like working outside of my direct supervising position and also where there is already a really clear line of how you deal with the problem. I'm like, hmm, maybe we shouldn't mention this. So those are my two. Okay. Things. Thanks, Casey. I've written those down. Appreciate it. Other challenges people are facing or things that they feel would help them utilize restorative practices more. Yeah, I think like just seeing it more, seeing it implemented a lot more. And if like, you know, people are doing it in their departments or like um, having any events or things around that kind of keeping us in the loop so that way we can stay connected and see how other people are doing it in their um, own respective ways. And I think I think that's a lot helpful to retain um, because it was a lot of like great potent information, um, but some things don't stick as much as others. So I would say kind of like keeping people in the loop and just seeing, just seeing it a lot more, you know. Great, thanks Markel, appreciate that. Other thoughts? Kathleen. It's Jane. Yes. Jane. Um, oh, yes. I see you, Jane. Go ahead. I'm willing to schedule like a monthly luncheon brown bag. Just schedule somewhere in Toronto or here. 
So if people do want to talk and meet about these things, we can. We are getting to my last uh, question, which is, uh, I think, a, a good segue, unless other people have anything they, else they want to articulate. But my last question for the group is, is there interest moving forward in us convening regular monthly conversations and building out? There is a shared drive. Lisa put it in the chat of um, the Zoom uh, conversation. I don't know if John can share that on the screen with all of you. It is the same shared drive where all of the retreat materials were given to you. And we've added some additional folders and files there. Not much has been contributed to, but it's there. The, the structure exists. But hearing everyone's suggestions, it sounds like there's some things that we can help one another with maybe even practicing some circles, certainly would be easier to do it in person and not Zoom when we're not uh, partially remote. Um, but to Jane's point, my last question was, what are your interests moving forward? How can we advance support and facilitate a broader utilization of restorative practices by building our skill set and helping one another? So Jane has suggested um, perhaps monthly gatherings, other suggestions, and is there interest in any of those? That was a big question. So just jump on in if you've got thoughts. This is Grace. Um, I definitely, that was going to be my primary reflection today. A lot of folks that I've talked to since then, if anything that they pulled from that was just the appreciation to meet with people across disciplines, across offices. It was such an empowering space to be in, just to see each other and talk to each other about things we um imagined for our campus, right? Like, I think that those are some of the practices that were happening in that room, whether we knew it or not. And if we could continue those conversations together, I think we're kind of leading by example of how restorative practices work um, and continuing to develop the relationships between ourselves will hopefully trickle down and, and spread, um, you know, because we like contagious things. So I think. Thanks, Grace. Other thoughts, Jackie. Um, I'm going to bring up another resource because I thought it was helpful and really tied in a lot mm -hmm. with our conversations we had during the retreat, but um, our SUNY career development folks hosted monthly um, book club sessions, and we broke up different chapters of a book called The um, Inclusive Mindset, um, and it talked about things like the um, you know, circle of grace and those types of things, and a lot of um, opportunities just reflect in a, I think, a, a safe space um, too. Uh, it might be neat and I would love to um, join others in the conversations around that resource as well, if anyone's interested in joining me. Um, that, but, in that uh, book particular, Jackie? Yeah, I thought it was a, a nice kind of intro and it it's set up in a way that um, allows for really good conversations. Okay. I, I, you know, if you want to send it to me, I'm happy to send the link out to the group and see if people who are interested, maybe we can create a Google form for folks to sign up and sort of a book club tangential to and relevant to restorative practices. That's a great yeah. idea. Thank you. Other thoughts? Yeah, so, you know, we also look into include others, send them through training to, you know, in addition to what we're doing, are we looking to offer it to others as well? Yeah, so you're, you're, you're all getting ahead of me here. Um, yeah, so my final announcement as we got closer to the end time, but I can jump ahead to that, is that we have received funding from Dr. Toll to offer a second retreat on campus. The date has been identified as April 4th and 5th. The contract has been signed. Sheldon Hall has been reserved, the Sheldon Ballroom, because a lot of the feedback that you all provided uh, in your evaluation form was that 201 Murano was a little too cramped. So we're going to use Sheldon Hall. Um, the application, call for applications, will go out at the start of spring semester. So for those of you that have colleagues that you think would be well served, either you would be well served by having them participate in the retreat, or um, they would be well served in your unit. You know, Casey, I think about, I don't know who you report to, but send your boss. <laughs> you know, if there are people that you think would be helpful to have uh, this experience, there will be 45 new seats available uh, April 4th and 5th. And Lisa and John helped us write a, an email that was sent out to faculty in December letting them know that this would be coming. So hopefully they saw that and they could make accommodations in their syllabi in anticipation for wanting to participate. Um, but then once those 45 are trained, uh, Renee, to answer your question, they would be invited to these kinds of monthly meetings, to the share drive. So we're really trying to build 
a critical mass of folks who understand what we mean when we talk about restorative practices. If that second retreat goes as well as the first, shows as much interest, then I'm hoping that Mary Toll and Kendra and others will continue to support additional ones, because I think the more staff we have who understand this, of course, the better um, we all will do in trying to implement these techniques on campus. Other thoughts for things that people would like to see to help us facilitate this work? What would be useful to you? We've got a book club, we've got a shared drive idea, we've got monthly meetings. Lisa Evaneski. What if we um, applied to get a, a, a listserv going of all the, the folks? Because sometimes I think it is hard to remember like everybody who was at the training and everybody was, you know, and then people could also share in, in person meetings, but, but if somebody's stuck or if somebody's looking for a volunteer to help them run a circle, um, or people just, you know, want to share ideas or, you know, these little cards or, you know, all those things that people have been talking about. Yes, you could put it in the drive, but then maybe the listserv would help to kind of keep communication open as we go in between meetings. I think that's a great idea. Don't quite know how to do that. Gwen's retired, but I will figure it out and have to do that <laughs> either when I get a new administrative assistant or maybe uh, Darlene in, in Christy Wynn's office can help me. But yes, I think that's a terrific idea. I, I would just add to that, you know, sending out sort of a tip, you know, like sort of little reminders about, you know, when, when this came up as a follow-up, I was like, okay, now I, I don't remember, I don't remember it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because so having like tips of, you know, maybe one reminder, one activity that we did and sort of the takeaways and things might help to yeah. sort of keep it fresh in our minds. That's a great idea, Michelle. And we have, uh, I know there's one restorative circle idea in the shared drive, for example, we could send that out, we could send out some check-in question samples, that sort of thing. Super idea. Thank you. Ooh, that made me think of like, if we had monthly challenges, that'd be kind of neat of like, you know, we challenge each other to, you know, implement this practice, you know, and you can pick and choose what works best for you or gives examples of how to do it. Happen into people's competitive spirit, huh, Jackie? <laughs> it might be in my top 10, but I don't usually use it for good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Other thoughts? Um, I, go ahead. Thanks, Liz. I do like what um, Michelle was saying. If we had like a, hey, uh, restorative practice tip of the week, or if you use something just in your daily life and it went well, like, hey, I tried this just to keep it fresh in our minds. Like, oh, right. That's in my toolbox and I forgot about it. So seeing things, but not like, hey, you must fill this out every week because that stresses me out. But if you have like, yeah, you're like, hey, I used it and it was cool. I'm going to send it to that listserv that we're going to figure out. <laughs> I think that that would be helpful just to see a quick demonstration of what people are doing and also doing here because we have the same student body, not necessarily what people are doing other places, but like what works here. Great. And then I'll call on Liz and then Lisa E. Oh, um. I was just going to suggest as we follow up, I think one of the most effective things I saw in practice was the fishbowl that you kind of tried out. And um, I, like, I, I wonder if we could try and maybe cultivate people who have an issue that they're willing to share who would like a, some group to facilitate a fishbowl. Um, this could be, you could look ahead to the um, spring breakout you know, maybe John would, you know, and we might be, might get volunteers in advance who have a problem or a dilemma or, you know, a challenge that they're facing that could really use something to facilitate that and, you know, kind of invite people to come either as observers or, you know, and so once we'd have a topic for the fishbowl, you could sort of advertise it. So people that think they might have something to say or advice to give would be more likely to come, but also know the people who want to observe this technique in action um, as well. I think that's a great idea. John, make note. Reach back out to us. We can do that. It could be a reality show too. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's sort of like a reality show when you watch it. Um, but I, I think it's a great idea. And I think demonstrating the technique and in, in using the technique for real life situations um, and offering, you know, we have this problem solving technique. If you've got a campus issue that you want help problem solving from a community perspective. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, Liz. Thanks. So mine was just going to be following up on the idea of the sharing ideas through the listserv. You know, I think we could even like to Casey's point, I also would 
react if it's like, please fill out this thing, but maybe we can volunteer um, to take, you know, uh, a week or a month and, and share, you know, be willing to research an idea and send it out to the group or something like that. So it doesn't feel like a burden. Like I have certain months that are just impossible for me. And I have other months where I'm like, do, 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 you know, and I might have a little more flexibility in my schedule. I also just want to point out my cat is being super dramatic behind me here. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thanks, Lisa. What cat? <laughs> We've got about seven minutes left. And so I want to make sure we've heard all your ideas and your needs and still save time for a checkout. So let's take a couple more comments and then we'll go around and do a checkout. I have a comment that I feel brave enough to share now. But um, to, Liz, to Liz with the challenging folks, don't give up because I, I did this three times now in staff meetings and I almost... We like doing it now, but we don't have to because we're having nice, kind, thoughtful, listening conversations instead of defensiveness that we had, um, quietness and avoidance that we had, um, and some other unkind things that we had. <laughs> so um, don't give up and maybe just modeling it or keeping the course might be helpful. Thanks, Jane. Thanks for sharing that. Other thoughts? Well, I really appreciate you all sharing these ideas. I will type them up. I will add them to the share drive. And you can expect that certainly by the start of the spring semester, we'll get some of these things in place. I think we'll go ahead and schedule monthly meetings. Um, if you remember one of our facilitators, I'm blanking on his name right now, he did this on his campus and they were optional. If you wanted to come and check in and have a conversation, you could do that. If you couldn't make the meeting, there was no big pressure to do that. So I think we'll establish them in person and hopefully folks can join us when they're able to. Um, I will work on setting up the listserv and then we can work on utilizing that listserv, maybe get some volunteers to help facilitate some information sharing on that. If you think of other ideas after we end the session today, since we only had 50 minutes, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, the other planning committee members were Lisa Glidden, John Kane, Christy Wynn, Kathy Evans, Christy Eck. I know I'm forgetting some people. Kendra. Oh, um, Brandon. Bennett, who else? And Kendra. Yeah. And I'm, I might have forget, forgotten someone else. So there are other folks that are that you could reach out to if you have ideas. We'll funnel, funnel them our way. Um, and then we will we might ask for some feedback from you all again as we finalize the plans for April 4th and 5th. But we are very much using the feedback that you provided in the evaluation form after the November retreat. So thank you for all of that. And if there are no other comments, let's do a checkout. Can we start again with the folks that are together in the room in Penfield? Yeah, Casey, go. Is it how we're feeling? What, what are we checking? What are we checking? <laughs> check out. Yep, yep. Just one word. How you're feeling? Um, reminded <laughs> that this exists. <laughs> Connected. I feel. <laughs> I feel great. <laughs> I feel chill. More confident. At a loss for words. <laughs> but still happy. Reminded also. Thank you. Yeah, also reminded and optimistic. Uh, resourceful. Inspired. Uh -oh. uh, you are muted. Definitely muted. Okay, I'm sorry. My husband's home, so I'm trying to mute in between now. Um, <laughs> I'm going to call on people, and I'll ask you to check in and or check out rather than call on someone yourself. So, Jackie, would you go first, please? Sorry, I couldn't get over to the mute button because my Zoom screen was down. Um, energized, and Sarah. Um, ready for a circle with my staff. <laughs> All right, um, Michelle. <laughs> um, I'll go with reminded. 
Annika. I think just happy this work is happening. I think it's going to be really beneficial. So it's nice watching it unfold and to get to be a part of it. Do I pass it on? I'll pass yeah. it on to Jack. Jackie, I think. Definitely. Jackie went. Jackie went, I think. I already went. Oh, my bad. Uh, I feel like I'm not a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Lisa, I know you haven't gone. <laughs> so there are three Lisas in the group. Pay attention. Um, Lisa and Julia. <laughs> or Julie. So I, I'm feeling also refreshed, and Julia is feeling happy that I'm home. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to pass it to Sorry. Markel. I'm going to pass it to Markel. <laughs> it's just easier. Yes. Reminded that there is work to do, but great work to do. Um, I'll pass it to Ashley. Yeah, I would say looking forward to continuing this work with you all and then um, with our team as well. And let's see, we'll pass it to who hasn't gone. Um, Megan. I'm feeling hopeful. And I'll pass it to Shelly. I'm feeling supported and I'll pass it to Holly. Uh, I'm feeling refreshed and Grace, have you gone? Pass it to Grace. Still here. Um, still feeling scattered, but grateful <laughs> for seeing you all today. <laughs> I'm gonna pass it to Christina. Um, I'm good. <laughs> uh, I will pass it to Liz. Feeling better. So the Delta's going in the right direction. So thanks. Good. <laughs> Pretty. Um, I wasn't at the previous restorative uh, practices session, so I am curious. Excellent. I Kristen. think uh, Michelle, okay. Kristen. Grateful, grateful for all of you. And just so you know, Kathy is here with me too. Kathy, you wanna share one? Where are you? Um, I am uh, re-energized. Excellent. Well, I am appreciative of all of your time today. That's my checkout. And we finished a minute to spare. So thank you all for your time and commitment. And I will be in touch shortly. So never fear. And we will continue this work. And uh, hopefully in April, add double our numbers of people who are committed to this and make some progress on campus. So thank you all and enjoy the rest of your day. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. I think I've been in that house.